Hey you guys, welcome to Captivating Convos. My name is Kim Ludeman and I am your confidence connoisseur here to help you navigate the murky waters of understanding how to get a life and a body that you cherish by ending body shame, by finding freedom from a life that's the lived by the shoulds, and by understanding what your body needs and how to work with your body rather than against it. So, if you're watching this replay, thank you so much for tuning in. I so appreciate it. I love doing these live. I love the interaction. So that is a big part of why I keep doing these on Facebook because you guys are just great. I forgot to open my beverage here. So I'm just gonna open that. Hi, Lauren, how are you? Hi, my friend, I miss you. Oh, I miss your face. You're so sweet. Is that Miss Kristen? Mm-hmm. Mm. Guys, I drank like six of those yesterday. I know this is something I shouldn't be proud of, but they were just, they're just so refreshing. You figured it out, yay. Kristen, you're the best. I definitely was having a morning and I was like, I can't think about time zones right now. I can't do it. It's been chaotic in here today, so. Thank you for your patience and understanding. You are so sweet. Oh, friend, can we please have a wine night? Lauren, I'm not even kidding. A wine night, it needs to happen because we have so much to catch up on, clearly. Gracious me. It is better than drinking pop. You funny girl. No, you, Kristen, Kristen, no girl. You are not a bother. I just definitely was in go mode all morning long. <laughs> Who's kidding? Who are we kidding? I haven't stopped being in go mode. Yes, Lauren, that's what I'm saying. Yes, yes, girl. Okay, so we're gonna, you guys, we are gonna dive right in. We're just gonna get talking because we have a lot to talk about today and a very short window in which to do it in. So, if you're ready, I would love it if you would check in, even if you're watching the replay, if you'll just comment with your name and where you're watching from, I love seeing where everybody's from. You could even type your current temperature if you wanted to. I think we're sitting pretty at like 80 something. It's our last day of hot weather, supposedly, but we need some rain, my friends. We need some rain up in here. It is hazy, hazy, hazy. Oh, Kristen, I'm sure, I'm sure it is. Florida is toasty, toasty, toasty. Hi, Sarah, welcome. So exciting, hello, my friends. Does any, is this anybody's first captivating convo? Anybody? First time chatting? I always wanna know who the newbies are. So, while I'm waiting for you guys, so if you're new to Facebook Live, there is a significant lag. There's like a 20 second delay between when you type something and when I see it. So just knowing that as we're moving forward. Oh my gosh, Kristen and Sarah, you're new. Welcome. This is so exciting. Fort Worth, Texas. Texas. Oh, that's so hot. I can't even imagine. And you have humidity. Craziness. Crazy, crazy. Well, let me introduce myself since we have some new folks among us today, you guys. My name is Kim. Hi, so nice to meet you. I've been a personal trainer and nutrition coach for 10 years. And for the last two years, I have been doing LuLaRoe, which has been amazing. It was kind of a little bit of a break from the gym and being in the health and fitness industry. I just needed to just take a step back and reevaluate. And I did, and two years of doing LuLaRoe has shown me that there is a significant need for not only confidence on the outside, but confidence on the inside, and a real confusion as to how to get that. So that basically is what birthed Captivatingly Confident. It's been my dream for the last 10 years to do this, and I feel like because of LuLaRoe, we're in a place where we can do it. So. It's super exciting. So we talk about lots of stuff. We talk about true health, nutrition, fitness, wellness, mindset, all of that goodness, personal style. It's all wrapped up into one place, which is great. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take some time and just talk about stuff that you guys have expressed struggles and issues with. 
I'm gonna do a little teaser for you right now. I'm so excited. For the month of September, we're gonna do a series just on balance because balance is the buzzword of the Captivatingly Confident Facebook group. Uh, everybody struggles with balance, I feel like. At least that's what it seems like. Does anybody in here struggle with balance? Hearts, thumbs if you do, because yeah. If you don't struggle with balance, then can you come over and take my place? Because wow, you're amazing. <laughs> Everyone struggles with it in one area or another. And the whole month of September is gonna be dedicated to understanding how to achieve balance. We're gonna learn from each other. It's gonna be incredible. I'm excited to learn. It's gonna be awesome. But for today, we're gonna talk about something that's really, really tricky. This is pretty much a like, um total stretch of landmines and I'm just gonna go running through it so if you get offended I am so sorry if you feel like well you know and you kind of get that little like defensive posture just hear me out and if it's not true for you then leave it if there is stuff that's true for you take it that's what I'm gonna preface this talk with because we're talking about diets the D word diets this is a really tricky one you guys and I have approached it with trap I always I always approach diet talk with some trepidation because I understand how personal diets are I understand I have been on them all if you name one I have probably been on it at one point in my life or another so I understand me too I gotcha however there's some truths you gotta know about diets there's some stuff you gotta know. So we're gonna dive right in. Um, when we're talking about diets, I wanna define that. Diets are any form of eating that includes restriction or limitations. So usually when we talk about diet, we talk about the foods that you eat. For our purposes today, it's gonna be a little bit more specific. So anything that's got a structure around it that, some, that you found somewhere that somebody told you about or you found it in a magazine or your friends doing keto or someone's like girl you gotta do Arbon, isogenics all that stuff those are diets so that's what we're talking about today Weight Watchers is a diet paleo is a diet all of these are diets and all of them cause you to self-sabotage so first I gotta ask how many in here have done a diet before whether it's Weight Watchers or maybe it's LA Weight Loss or you worked with a trainer who was like, here, eat these things, eat these macronutrients. Anybody done one? Emily has done one. I seriously could not tell you how many I've done in my life. It's so sad. <laughs> so sad. So the first thing you have to know about diets, and if you're taking notes, this is number one, is that diets do not equal healthy. Diet does not equal healthy. The two are not synonymous. If you, the top thing I've heard in the last decade, oh, Sarah, we'll talk. We'll talk about keto. The, la the biggest thing I've heard in the last decade is that I just wanna get healthy. I just wanna be healthier. I wanna make healthy choices. I wanna eat healthy foods. Hi, April, welcome. I want to be healthy. Diets are not synonymous with health. These two are not mutually exclusive. They do not go together. That's not, that is incorrect thinking. Because then if you think I wanna get healthy, which is amazing in a lot of ways, sort of, <laughs> we'll talk about that too. If you wanna get healthy, that does not mean going on a diet. It does not suddenly mean restricting foods. It does not mean cutting out food groups. That's not health, my friends. That's not health, that's a diet. Awesome, April, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. How long have you been doing it for? Um, okay, so diets do not equal health. This is like our overarching theme for today. For health, you have to define that for yourself. That is, health is such a personal thing. What healthy means to me does not mean healthy to you does not mean healthy to Sarah, does not mean healthy to Kristen. Not the same definition. Everybody's definition is different. We all have different needs, different bodies, different backgrounds. Everyone's version of health is different. So if somebody says, I wanna get healthy, 
You have to really look at what that means. So that's number one. Number two, there's actually four points because I added that first one earlier. Number two, diets always rely on willpower. They always rely on willpower. How many of you have like done a diet and gotten maybe like three weeks into it and all of a sudden the fun of tracking has worn off, your app is like taking up all your time because you're entering your food every day or you are just hungry or maybe you're not hungry at all but you've got cravings, cravings. Interesting, April, interesting. Um, that you're not dieting, but you're doing keto. That's my only, that's what I mean interesting. This is a landmine. <laughs> it's landmines or diets. Oh, it's funny. Okay, so willpower. Every single diet requires willpower. And willpower will fail you 99.9% .9 of the time. It's exhausting, friends, to use willpower. It's exhausting because you are fighting your biology. You are designed to eat more and move less. And diets flip that and they're like, guess what? You get to eat less and move more. You're fighting your biology. Diets work against your own natural rhythms. As far as eating, a lot of diets say, you know, eat six small meals throughout the day, but your body is not hardwired to do that. At least most people's are not. So you're working against yourself. It also angers your inner rebel right here. You have a teenager that lives in your brain. Did you know this? You do. You have a teenager right here that lives in your brain. And anytime you tell that teenager, nope, you can't do that. You can't have that. You have to do this. You have to do that. That teenager is like, Psh, yeah, right. Like we remember what we were like as teenagers, totally rebellious against anything our parents said, right? Unless you were like me and you were that really, really good teenager who never did anything wrong. Well, well let's not talk about it. But it angers the inner rebel. And your inner rebel is going to fight to get what it wants. So every single diet requires restriction. Every single diet restricts. There are foods you cannot eat on a diet. And if you do eat them, you have to eat minuscule portions and you have to watch it and it has to be limited. All of that, all that limiting conversation triggers the inner rebel, which again, kind of tumbles into the willpower where then you're just like, you give in because you can only fight your teenager for so long before you go a little bit crazy. Can I get an amen? I don't have a teenager, but I remember what I was like and I worked with teenagers and yeah. It also triggers your limiting beliefs about yourself and your abilities. And this is a big one. This is the mindset side of this. This is where you do a diet and because you're using willpower and because you're restricting and working against your biology, you don't sustain it. You fall off the wagon is kind of how we, or you get off track or you start cheat mailing your way through it. It's like, oh, I just do one cheat meal a day and that turns, or a cheat meal a day. Cheat meal a week and then it turns into cheat meal a day and then before you know it, you're off your diet. And you feel like a failure, which is ridiculous because the diet failed you, not the other way around. The diet failed you because that's what it's designed to do. Your diet is designed to trigger the inner rebel, to rely on willpower and to limit your beliefs about what you can do and what you're capable of. So that's the first point. The second point and the second way that diets cause self-sabotage is by restricting calories. Calories. How many of you have counted calories before? Anybody counted calories? I have this really neat party trick where if you show me some a food, I can tell you the calories like that. Per, per like serving. <laughs> It's a nasty, nasty, nasty habit I've picked up from years of calorie counting. Calorie counting will cause you to self-sabotage because it causes hormone imbalances. Right, Sarah? Of course. Of course, counting calories is like how you do it. Or points. Points is almost, it's not the same as counting calories, but the idea is that you're counting, you're assigning a, a numerical value to food and eating 
according to that numerical value. So points counting is the same is the same for our purposes. So restricting calories can cause hormone imbalance because your body's not getting enough nutrients that it needs. It's not getting enough fuel to get you through the day. And especially for women, we typically cut back on carbohydrates, carbs. It's like carbs are like the most demonized food in the world. And the problem for women specifically is that that carbohydrate reduction can cause a huge shift in hormones. You may not see it right up front, but give it a couple of months and you will notice the hormone shifting. This is a big problem for a lot of women and they wonder what they're doing wrong, but they're not doing anything wrong. Again, it's the diet that's failing you, you not the other way around. It also causes nutrient deficiencies. When you eliminate major food groups from your diet, you can cause major nutritional deficiencies. Does it, has anybody done the low fat diet? Diet of the 90s, living on snack wells and like lean turkey breast. <laughs> Shudder, my parents loved the snack wells cookies, those green boxes of the cardboard cookies. Yeah, yeah, we ate those. So when you take out fat from your diet, the problem is, is that there's a lot of vitamins and minerals that are fat soluble, which means they need to be consumed with fat so that they get absorbed into the body. But if you take away the fat, you take away the vitamins and minerals. It's no good, friends. It's no good. Uh, you also can create starvation mode. So when you reduce your calories too low, your body needs that energy. And it's like, wait, where's my energy? Where did it go? I need it. So then it kind of forces this starvation mode. And that messes again with hormone balance. You have two hunger hormones, ghrelin and leptin. Ghrelin is the hunger hormone. So when you think of like your tummy growling, that's ghrelin. That's the hormone that's like, I need some food. Leptin is the fullness hormone. It's the satiation hormone. It's the one that's like, oh girl, I'm done. I am good good to go. Those hormones get all cattywampus and you lose the leptin and you get more ghrelin. Ghrelin gets stimulated by too much of a reduction of calories. It's no good. So then you're hungrier, but you're reducing calories and your body's trying to get those calories back. And we're not even going to talk about catabolism, which is where your body starts to use muscle fibers as fuel. Your body eats your own muscles. Catabolism cannibalism. We'll talk about that later. Uh, there's also inaccurate calculations. This one is a biggie. So say you go to the gym because you're supposed to move more, eat less, right? Yeah, yeah. You get on the treadmill and you're huffing it, right? You're, you're like, I must have burned like a million calories. And the treadmill says you've burned 300. Well, the calorie counters on your treadmill are drastically inaccurate. It takes a lot of effort to burn some calories. It takes a lot of effort. And it's very situational dependent and it's very person dependent on the amount of calories. So there's no one size fits all. You can't have like, you can't take it to a little like test online and be like, oh, I need 1500 calories a day. There's so much more that goes into it. You need like a bod pod that tells you like, that breaks down like your breath and tells you exactly how many calories you need. But even then it varies. Day, each day based on your stress level, based on your activity level. It's grossly inaccurate and it's really hard to count calories. You have to like weigh your food. It's, it's this whole thing. Calorie counting is inaccurate. It is. Again, it's not you failing the diet. It's the diet failing you. I want you to remember that. That's the takeaway today. That's the big one. Number three, the third reason that diets cause self-sabotage is because all diets use a one-size-fits-all approach. Even if they say they don't. It's sneaky. They're sneaky sometimes. They say, oh, this diet's totally customizable with your life. It's very, you know, you pick the foods that you need, yet it's all one-size-fits-all. For example, keto. You just pick your level of carbohydrates, it's totally customizable, right? The problem is, is that you're cutting out large amounts of carbohydrates. So much so that your body like panics, drops 10 pounds instantly because of water weight, 
and it just goes into kind of a shock. You shock your body into weight loss, uh, which will define weight loss another day because we're, we we're not even going to go there today. One size fits all approach. It doesn't take into account your blood type. Did you know that your blood type actually impacts the type of foods that you eat and how your body responds to certain foods? Mind blown. Uh, eat right for your blood type. Google search it. It's amazing. It's a great resource. Uh, it is a wonderful tool. I feel like the more tools you have to know how your body works, the better off you are and the more successful you're going to be in having a body and a life that you love. It also does not into take it does not take into account your individual needs. It doesn't. It doesn't take into account if you get five hours of sleep at night. It does not take into account your hormone imbalances, your stress levels. It doesn't take into account any of that. Each person is different, and those all affect the amount of diet, uh, food, and exercise that you need. It also causes a moralization of food because we have foods that are not good and foods that are good. So if we're looking at Weight Watchers, for example, there are foods that are super high in points. Like if you eat that, that's your food for the day. If you eat a slice of cake, like that's pretty much your points for the day. Keto, if you have a piece of bread, there's your carbs for the day. Like you're done. So those are foods that just even naturally get moralized. Sugar, sugar is a huge one, Whole30, uh, paleo, I'm trying to think of ones off the top of my head, Atkins, those are all anti-sugar. Sugar, bad. You have to limit it, you've got you've to control it, you have to avoid it as much as possible. It moralizes food. And the problem with moralizing food, raising the level of food above one another, is that it creates guilt and shame in you. Again, it's not you that's failing, it's the diet that's failing you. So when you moralize food, if you, what happens if you eat a food that's a bad food? You're bad. You did something bad because you ate a bad food. And you do that enough times and soon enough that starts to become part of your identity. Instead of it being like you are bad, you did something bad, like you did this bad thing, it becomes you are bad. You're a failure. You're never gonna get this right. And that's shame. You put enough guilt in and it turns into shame. And that shame, ooh, Kristen, no girl. Also, we'll talk about moderation. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Um, but it turns into shame. And you're walking around wounded. And you feel like a failure and you feel like you'll never get it right. And you're stuck. So you gotta keep trying different diets until you find the right one. The feeling of failure is huge. It's huge. How many of us have felt like a failure after doing a diet and not being able to maintain your results? This is a really big one. Maintenance of results is so hard. Losing weight is not hard. Anybody can drop 10 pounds. Anybody can. Anybody can do that. Keep those 10 pounds off. That's where the real work comes in. And if you're doing a diet, that is going to cost you willpower for the rest of your life. So you may get a body that you like, maybe. How many of us diet and actually like the body that we get? Just saying, just saying. So you've got a body that you maybe like and you're excited about because you're losing weight. But the problem is, is that you don't really like your life because you gotta count calories and you gotta use willpower and you have to be on a diet and there's food you can't eat and it really cramps your social life. It really cramps your social style. It's hard. And it shouldn't be, friends. Should not be hard. Having a body and a life you love requires work up front and it requires awareness and practice, but it shouldn't be a constant struggle and you shouldn't feel like a failure in living your own life. You shouldn't. But diets will do that to you every single time. They'll make you feel like a failure. So what? do we do? Hi, Miss Anna. What do we do? What do we do? If diets aren't the answer, what is? And I think you have to sit back and ask yourself, hi friend, what do you really want? 
What do you really want? This is something I do with clients all the time. I sit down with them and I ask what they want. I want to get healthier. Why do you want to get healthier? Well, I want to be stronger. Why do you want to be stronger? Well, I want to keep up with my kids. Why do you want to keep up with your kids? Well, because they're faster than me. Why are they faster than you? Well, because I, I can't climb stairs without getting winded. Well, why do you want to climb stairs without getting winded? You just have to keep going. You have to keep digging because a lot of us have these desires for our life and our bodies and we can't put words to it. So we use, we kind of borrow words that we've heard in pop culture. I want to be healthier. I want to be toned. This is my favorite. What is toned? What is that? I've deduced that that means that your muscles show. I've deduced that that is what toned means. <laughs> but I think a lot of us don't know what toned means. What does strong mean? Strong to me means something different than strong to you. Healthy to me means something that something different than what healthy means to you. And I think the answer, friends, is that you have to sit back and ask yourself, what do I want? Do you want to be 10 pounds lighter? Why do you want to be 10, pound li 10 pounds lighter? Do you think you're going to like yourself more 10 pounds lighter? What happens if you gain that back? Do you not like yourself anymore? Like, there's some really hard questions to ask and some really hard truths to be talked about. But what is a little muscle and what's less flab? See, it's very subjective, very subjective. It is hard to nail these definitions down. But this is the work that you have to do is understanding what you want from your body and from your life. Defining what you want is super, super, super important. Getting to the bottom of it. So I always suggest turning into a three-year-old and asking why, 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 why? <laughs> Until you get to the bottom of it. Until you get to the answer that makes you cry. Because that is where the change is. That's where the change is. Because you want to climb up a flight of stairs because it's uncomfortable when you can't breathe. And that uncomfortability makes you feel ashamed because the stairs beat you in some sense. You got to get to the bottom of it. You got to find the answer that brings up the emotion for you. Getting healthy doesn't really do it, right? It's like, I want to get healthy. Well, everybody wants to get healthy, but what does healthy mean to you and why do you want it? And how much are you willing to give up to get it? Because if you're going to go the route of diets, you have to give up a lot a lot your arm is flabby you want to tone it a little bit but what do you mean by toning it's you got to get down to it like what's going to be better about your life april if your arms are not flabby what's going to be better about your life and how is that going to benefit you and how is that going to give you a body and life that you love how is it going to do it and what happens if you can't tone your arms some people are genetically predisposed to hold fat in certain areas. For moi, it is my arms. It is my arms and back here. This area is where my body stores fat. They will never, <laughs> I've tried, they'll never be muscular and lean. I will always have a back fat roll. I will always have that, always. But it took me years of dieting and exercising to learn that this is where my body stores fat and I better accept it or else I'm gonna spend my life in the gym doing stinking rows and planks that just, heck, that's not very much fun. I'd rather be doing other stuff that is not focused on that. Does that make sense? Hearts and thumbs if that makes sense. If it does, if it kind of, if you're tracking with me, if you're resonating with this, if you understand what I'm saying, this is a tricky one, you guys. This is a really, really hard topic because diets are very personal. They're very personal. Women are very defensive of their diets, very. And I understand that. But this is where you gotta kinda come to. You gotta come down to the uncomfortable part and do some thinking and some defining for yourself and thinking through you know, I just need to lose the last 15 or I'd be so much happier if I was 30 pounds lighter or I'd be so happy if I could get into a pair of size six jeans. Why? And what if that didn't happen? 
Diets are not guarantees of weight loss success. They are not. For all the reasons that we talked about already. So, and that is food for thought. Kristen had mentioned earlier, everything in moderation. That is another topic for another day because there's a lot that I have to say about moderation. I think that you have to do a lot of work to get there. My friend Kevin Geary at Rebooted Body says that moderation is not the weapon that you yield, it's the prize that you win. So when you've done the work of understanding what you want, getting rid of diet mentality, get rid of moralizing food, you accept what you're working with, you practice awareness, then moderation becomes a lot easier to use and to still get you where you wanna be. Does that make sense, Kristen? That's a whole, I mean, we could spend like a month talking about moderation. Cause that is, it's a, it's an interesting one. I think that is that, that idea paired with a diet mentality will get you into trouble every single time because it's using that moderation, uh, which kind of goes back to the first, first point that we talked about, about relying on willpower. So, all right, my friends, that is it for me today. Thank you so much. I would love to have your feedback. If you want to comment on this video, you can send me a PM. You can email me, Kim at CaptivatinglyConfident.com. I would love to hear all of your feedback for this. I'll be posting a blog later on this week that goes a little bit more in depth to this. If you want to check that out, that's at CaptivatinglyConfident.com. If you've come to the point where you're like, oh my gosh, I think I need some clarity and some help and I need to know what to do next, then schedule a clarity call with me. It's a 15 minute call where we kind of talk about your struggles and figure out what your next best step is. So you can schedule that on my website, captivatinglyconfident.com. If you go to the work with me page, there's a huge button, you can't miss it. Click on that, schedule it today and let's get on the phone and let's chat. Let's figure out what your next, next best steps are. Thanks so much, you guys. Have a great rest of your week. I will see you next Tuesday, 1 p.m. PST. Bye, friends.